This is it. This is the last time. You ready? <clears throat> Why is this the last time? Tell me you want to tell us. No. <laughs> You're listening to episode 285 of PHP Ugly, your home of PHP goodness and happiness on this sacred day of Cinco de Mayo, which if you're not familiar with what Cinco de Mayo is, because we have a worldwide audience, it's an American holiday founded for the celebration of the foundation of Taco Bell. <laughs> and as... It's, it's pretty close, actually. <laughs> And in honor of that, I will be doing a shot of tequila every time I offend somebody. So right, we're just going to get that, that one Hold out on. of the way. I don't even have mine opened yet. Hold Ooh. on. Oh, wait. We're all doing tequila? Awesome. I thought we were. That was oh, the whole idea. I got hold on. I got a whole bottle here, so oh we're good. boy, let's. I, I'm I'm doing I'm doing one because I've had enough tequila tonight. Yeah, I have I have the I got, one. I got one of my kids. And they, come here, come here, come here, come here. If you're gonna you're gonna do this. You're gonna do it on camera. Come on. I got one of my kids here. Okay. What Wait, is let it? me go get my kid too. Yeah, get, get your kid. <laughs> get them all. Get all the kids to do shots of tequila. <laughs> Oh okay, boy, this is me. this is gonna be terrible. There what an awful Are start. you still Tra pouring your tequila? Time? Yeah, well, I, I got the little tiny bottle, and oh you can't God. drink straight from it. I have to put it into a shot glass. <laughs> oh, I got that, another kid. That 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 looks like a baby bottle glass, not a shot glass. <sighs> it's a baby. Uh, I am your host, star. Eric Van Johnson, and with me tonight is John Congdon. Oh, this is gonna be a rough one. Yes, it is. And the man who cannot pour a shot of tequila, Tom right up. Hola. <laughs> and I got I got my other kid in here now. So they're catching Sarah, up. Sarah is not going to give up until you get a... Sarah has been wow. bullying me all day. Good job, and, Sarah. Good job. And, and I, have a, I have a margarita as well. well all right. Cheers, so, guys. Cheers, but I've already drank one. All right, Whew, this is gonna be a good one. I won't feel any pain, Should and I'm ready to sure. take on Sarah Goldman. You want to bring it, lady? No. No, Cinco de Mayo. Kidding. For those who don't know, she, she, Cinco de Mayo is a, Cinco de Mayo is an American holiday celebrating the the uh, victory of Mexico in the Battle of Puebla. It is in Mexico, really only celebrated in Puebla. And Americans think it is Mexican Independence Day. So that's what we do here. <laughs> Sarah, is, Sarah is right. She brought it and she has video to prove it. Eric, she called Ooh. you out. Let's roll that intro again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that had to be the longest intro of all the PHP Uglies. I had to throw it together last second. Well, well I'm the fact that the fact that there's an ad to begin with that nobody heard because nobody could hear anything. We went through the whole <laughs> song where nobody could hear it. And then we yep. had to go through it again so that people could hear it, even though we heard it the first time. I, I think I had to do the shot because I might have offended Sarah. Hold on, I got this. I I did, this I is three shot that in, in three just, minutes. Just, oh, did I start Zincaster? Dear like God, tell seconds. me I started Zincaster. Woo! Yes, you started Zengaster. Just attack Sarah on Twitter. She's defenseless there. <laughs> I'm trying now. to get Ramsey to ban her from from uh, Mastodon. <laughs> Mastodon? What's it called? Mastodon? 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 Yep. <sighs> Which we need a PHP Architect article for. Oh, yeah. That's right. That would be good. We That'd do. Good. Have, we, we are expecting an article from... Sarah, I'm actually very excited about it. No, now, I it on though. I I know, I know. We she don't. hasn't signed the contract yet. She can't get she can't get it past the higher ups. So that's not <laughs> the high, happening. The higher ups, the drunker ups. I know we don't cover <laughs> politics here, so I'm just gonna say fuck the Supreme Court. For yeah, sure, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Speaking of which, just leave it. I, I guess. I guess. Uh, Taylor got a little grief for 
making some political statements and it, made it very it, clear he would not be exactly. making political statements anymore on Twitter. I did not he, catch that. He will not, he will not be making any personal statements anymore because of some oh. grief he got. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, He's not like I'm, us. He, he cares I'm too like, much of what people think of him. We mm, just no, kind of fuck. Not. Yeah, I, I don't care. <laughs> I say a lot of stupid shit and don't care what people think. Yeah, for I sure. Bad. I felt bad because uh, some people had some good takes on it. Where there, you know, he he's he's like, hey, I have a global audience. American politics doesn't really apply to everybody who follows me. And a lot of people are like, no, that's why you need to make a stand on this stuff because you do have a global audience. Your voice carries a lot of weight, and people you know listen to the things you say. It's a tough position to be in because, I mean, much like this show, right? It's like, I don't want to get into politics. I want to talk about coding. I want to talk about programming. But, it, and we're not influential, so we really should not be talking about politics. But somebody like Taylor, who has a huge following, who, you know, people listen to what he says, it's a tough position to be in, right? But, because, but, would, you, but would you say that if you disagreed with what he was saying? That's that's the problem. No, I, we, I, I I'm very intrigued by this because his comment was in support of women's rights. Right, right. But but if he was on the other side of the fence, would you be upset? Me, like I don't want to hear what you have to say. You're you're a person who wrote a framework. I don't care. I absolutely want to hear what people have to say, but I have the right to tell them to fuck off too. It, I, I mean, I Twitter's a two way platform in that way. Hey, uh, well, we, it, but... we have people asking Discord about the tweet. Uh, oh, actually, I think I found it here. I was say if, uh, if you throw it in show notes, that'd be great. I was curious about it too. I don't know what he said. I, I saw his tweet about getting off of Twitter personally and only using it to promote Laravel and his businesses. Uh, yeah. he, he, he basically just said that he supports a woman's right to. Well, I mean, I got the exact tweet right here. One second. Um, I support oh, the women in my country and their right to make their own medical choices in consultation with their doctors. Right. Very, I mean, very, I thought very well a, worded, actually. Yeah, sure. I mean, like, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, we have, we have that issue as well as, you know, a, a company and, and even, you know, more importantly, the magazine, the brand of PHP Architect, you know, where we, you know, we are okay. I don't know. I mean, I can I can see both sides. I can see where Taylor's coming from, right? Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to do it with here with PHP Architect. We just can't avoid. I mean, PHP Ugly. We just can't avoid it. But it's like he doesn't want to have. I don't know. I appreciate the fact that he did that. Um, I respect the fact that he doesn't want to do it moving forward. I, I I do like the fact that he didn't take down the original tweet. He left it out there. I sure. do know other people who had taken down their tweets, but well, and, and I'll, you know, I am not associated with PHP architect and I'm barely associated with PHP ugly. I'll come out and say women's right to choose, man. That this is, a, oh, oh. this is an unprecedented. This is, this goes to that question. Upset. Right? This is an unprecedented upset in established law and the popular opinion. Even mm -hmm. this goes against, everything that America currently stands for. It's so disgusting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's just a fucking nightmare. And I hope, I hope good things come from this. I hope we codify the law and I hope that we, we radicalize the people on the left who think that they're centrists and don't realize that that is not a real position politically in America. And I hope something changes, but yeah, it's, it's to me, it's fucking crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's a weird world we're in right now. That's for damn sure. And I do believe we have not mentioned the actual topic, so it's not technically political. <laughs> yeah, you said women's rights. I mean, that's well. Oh, uh, Taylor said hey, women's hey, rights. No, if you, you have said complaints, fuck the Supreme take Court. Taylor. But you said fuck the Supreme Court, so we, you did kind of bring it up. Well, I've been saying yeah. that for a couple of years now, though. 
Oh, All right, we should move, move on, on before we go too down, too far down. I just wanted to give uh, Taylor some props for for making the statement, and then I feel for him uh, as far as you know what he said as far as as far as not doing it forward. Yeah, it, it's hard when you run a business and you have to like walk that line where you don't want people to know your stance. I mean, we we last month uh, we did right behind john if you're watching the video we did the cover of php architect for uh to in support of ukraine and i mean again you know when you when you're pretty sure you're on the right on, on the side of right you feel a lot more confident in doing that stuff but i mean even that sort of thing can you know could could i mean it was it was a conversation john and i had on whether or not we wanted to do that. We we have some um, articles inside as far as the editorial. And I think finally also mentions uh, you know the the conflict. So you know we're not. That's not our. That's not our subject matter. <laughs> you know that's not what we're supposed think, to be talking about. I think what Eric is trying to say is play that intro again. Hey there, Colorado. You're probably tired of God damn insurance. it, an ad again. <laughs> what happened? I got an ad. You got an ad. <laughs> it's okay. We didn't hear it. <laughs> but, you, but YouTube did. It's okay. It counts. Someone made 30 cents. <laughs> okay. I've been on vacation. I've been on vacation. I have yes, very have. little oh, yes. coding stuff to talk about. You, you went on vacation to San Francisco. I need to hear about this. What? What? Yeah. I, I love San Francisco. What, what do you want to hear? What? What? I mean, like I saw Twitter updates, or not Twitter, Facebook up, updates nonstop. You were all over San Francisco. What did you do? I, I was bouncing <laughs> around. Yeah. Well, well, what am I? Wait, wait, wait. Did you record a roundtable while you were up there? I did not. Damn. I did not. We'll get to roundtable. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make Sarah listen to the whole show before I get to roundtable. I'm pouring another shot of tequila. Just to get myself ready for when I offend somebody. Okay, I mean, uh, is on your tail. San Francisco, I, 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 I always forget. Words. It's been a few years since I've been up there. I used to go up there every year. I used to go up for a Google I/O, and uh, there was uh, a, a vendor I had up there that I'd go up there every year. But it's probably been a good ten years since I've been up there. Uh, I really enjoy uh, San Francisco, but you forget how much of a uh, a densely populated city San Francisco is. When you when you live on the West Coast, like New York, Chicago, you know, you can you kind of become accustomed to like densely populated areas and cities. Uh, but I forget, like like San Francisco is a city. I mean, it's a big city, and there's a lot of people there, and I missed the pandemic a little bit because there are just so many people. <laughs> and and the, the buildings are tall and the streets are crowded. Yeah. So it was good. But I, I, I we ended up going to a lot of baseball games. I, I caught uh, a Giants game and an uh, Oakland A's game. Um, yeah, had a, had a really good time. Matter of fact, I have a story. Look, so my wife, who is a wonderful person, um, she's actually very vigilant on she she is php knowledgeable adjacent like she has like some idea of what i do but most importantly she knows that the elephant is a mascot of php so whenever she sees an elephant she makes mention of it okay i'm gonna bring this up because we're talking and sarah's been giving me a hard time sarah i want you to notice behind me I have my PHP roundtable elephant queued up. I haven't even switched it back to the architect elephant because I forgot. My PHP roundtable elephant was queued up for recording today. Get off my back. Just saying. I was ready to go. We were ready. To... Anyways, so we go to. So you were supposed to record today? Is that what you're saying? To John, John, please. <laughs> Trying to have a conversation here with our listeners. So uh, so we go to Oakland Athletics game, and their mascot is Stomper, who is a elephant. And 
she's like, hey, look, you know, Stompers and an elephant and PHP and da da da. I even got uh, I even got a happy birthday message uh, up on the big board for my wife, and there was a little adorable. picture of Stomper next to that. Right? Thank you. So so she goes, so she buys this little Stomper magnet, and she gets this for me. If you're not watching the video podcast, I apologize, but it's a little Stomper bobblehead, right? And so after the game, which keep in mind, there were like 2,000 people at the game. There are more people at the minor league team by my house than were at this game. It was hysterical. But after the game, we see Stomper walking by, and Beck's like, get your picture taken with Stomper. Get your picture taken with Stomper. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, elephant, let's do it. And I, and I walk over to Stomper, and I'm like, hey, Stomper, can I get my picture taken with you? He flat out waves me off and walks on by. I'm like, fuck you, Stomper. That's why no one comes to the stadium, you piece of crap. So then, uh, then Beck was like, I, don't, I want to return the stuff. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. So Stomper, whoever you are, you mess you mess with the wrong podcaster, buddy. <laughs> so you're calling a, a boycott of the games? Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of the athletics anymore. <laughs> but this is cute. It is a cute little uh, thing. We, I'm not a I'm not a baseball fan. That's like a known really. That's a it's an established that thing. But the tech of the baseball lately has has had me intrigued, and I shared a video with you guys of of an umpire calling three straight balls as strikes, like real, real bad calls. Two of them were really bad. One of them was on the border, but two of them were just straight bad. And. I'm hoping the I'm hoping the robot overlords take over pretty soon because that that was it's frustrating. Is that going to make you want to watch baseball when it when that happens? Is that the point? Well, once we get to the robot batters and pitchers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they throw a soccer ball in there with just two nets and yeah, yeah, and a car. Yeah, that, you'll watch that. I, uh... It's. It's, it was just it was very bizarre watching what we were just talking about up on the like big stage and people were losing their minds. Eric, yeah. you gonna come down to, to the Padres game on Sunday? I'm coming down you... to the Padres game tomorrow. What's up, buddy? Tomorrow. T- tomorrow. Tomorrow's no good. Why aren't you coming down on your birthday? You went to you went to a baseball game on your wife's birthday. Shouldn't you go for your birthday too? Speaking of which, well, your birthday is coming up on Sunday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, it's uh it's it's night out at the park uh tomorrow. So we, we have a night out. We we go every year and I, I get the little uh rainbow San Diego padre caps. Which uh fun story. I I apparently ooze a lot of gay magnetism when I put on rainbows. I okay. just attract I attract people. I've had too much to drink already. I mean, I'm <laughs> the same way with drink. my disco pants. Whenever I wear my disco outfit, everyone thinks I love disco. <laughs> oh, yeah. So so the cat's pretty much out of the bag if you spend any time in the ugly Discord. But we were all set to record a PHP roundtable today. And uh, getting everything set up, um, get, getting everything in line and uh last minute we had to pull the rip cord on it i'm not gonna say why we pulled the rip cord i'm not gonna say who backed out exactly how many people were wait how many people were supposed to be on i will say ramsey was one of the people who was supposed to be on the show i'm just saying ramsey was supposed to be on sabotage a sabotage was occurred i'm not Connecting the dots, you I, connect I would have stepped in more. You would ask. Oh man, yeah, yeah. We, we're gonna we're gonna set it up again. We're gonna Let's set see it up that again. the all sponsors edition of of PHP Roundtable. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, we got so we're we're getting Roundtable going again. We're we're doing a little bit of a different format. 
Um, we're going to have like a, a regular panel um, of uh, you know a bunch of, like three other people, and then we'll we'll kind of blend in you know, other people like guests. I guess you can call them guests. Uh, whenever we can secure one, anybody who wants to hang out with us for for an hour or two, we'll we'll bring them in. Two but, is way yeah. too long. Huh? Two is way too long. Two is one way is way too long. long. I don't know how people listen to this thing for an hour. I don't know, man. Just saying. People, people want gotcha. it. Yeah. All right. I want to get this out of the way. I had an absolute <clears throat> fucking blast yesterday. I saw this. Is, is this going to is this going to be paragliding? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna be about. It's called so paragliding, I'm not, I'm not, by the way. It's not called I'm parapiloting. Not, from from what I understand, say, John is a top now. I, I am not allowed to say I went flying. Eric says no, you went falling. It doesn't. It, it says gliding right in the title, man. So when when I go to leave, I'm like, hey, I'm going falling now because that's what I have to say. But yesterday I get get to class. I'm going just for the afternoon. We go down. We look at, you know. The weather and the the winds are cross, so I'm not able to fly. The instructor Josh, who was really cool guys, like I don't know if it's going to turn in. If you guys have something else you want to do, you know, take off. So probably half the class is like, "Bye, gotta go." Like I have other stuff to do. And I'm like, I need to practice just the kiting anyway. And if the winds turn and I get to fly, it's great. Sounds like I really don't want to go back to the kids and family, so I'm out here, man. <laughs> Keep me. I'll drink. I'll kids drink family. That one, John, I'm sorry. <laughs> kids and family are in school. Oh my god! And then e uh, Eric's just insulting people now to drink tequila. Yeah. So anyway, that's um, not true. You're an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just practicing my kiting, having a blast. I get to a point. I'm like, all right, I need to take a break. I should get some water because I'm often being accused of like going too far. Like I'm not taking the break. So I walk over to the little gazebo take all my stuff off i'm gonna go buy a water because i forgot to bring some as soon as i get everything off i hear the instructor on the radio like yeah it looks like the winds have turned in if you're anyone wants to fly come on out i'm like okay <laughs> buckle up real quick I, I get out there i got four flights in all landing on top so i don't have to climb the stairs which is amazing and i got my longest flight in of 30 minutes and I'm telling you, this it's so much fun. So I I always pictured this paragliding thing as like a relaxing float upon the air. And you posted the video of your top landing that was like stressful for me to watch. Why? What part was stressful? Like all the commands and then like like getting close to other paragliders and like the, wasn't close. Who do you get close to? The, well, I mean, the ground being. Tom, they literally have a parachute already on their back. What's going to happen? Well, no, because he, when he, before he took off, his instructor just gets on the comms and is like, yeah, you're collapsing. You're collapsing. And That's John's because like, another, another gliders went through and sent wake up to mine. I had to control it. Right, that doesn't make it less stressful that you know why it happened. <laughs> it's just the whole thing. And like as, soon as, as soon as you're off the hill, the instructor's like, get get in your sack, get in your sack. <laughs> power line, power bar, power bar, break left, you break paid left. Way like, more attention to that video than I did. I, no, dude. I just watched was, the beginning, then I watched the end to see if he, he lived. I'm like, oh, if you it. watch it on mute, you're like, what a relaxing glide through the air. But if you watch it with the instructor's audio on, it is <laughs> terrifying. Because the so, whole time so, the instructor's like, you're fucking up, you're fucking up, you're about to die. <laughs> so that that's not true at all. And so in the one you saw, which is probably my ninth or tenth flight, yeah, he's remote controlling me. He's he's constantly telling me where I need to make my turns, what I'm supposed to be doing. All four flights yesterday, my first one specifically, I go off the cliff and he he tells me to go off to the north face. He basically has all four or five of us out there at the same time. And I'm just out there floating. I'm used to the other instructor like, all right, John, you, right about there. You should feel some lift. All right. Go ahead and start making your left-hand turn. 
Meanwhile, I'm just out there flying. I feel the lift. I'm going and okay, my that... instructor is not talking to me. And I'm like, should I turn? What am I? Sp-? No, he's like, let me just do my own thing. So I'm just up there flying around, making my that making that going might up and the, down the that, ridge. That might be the case. I'm not saying it isn't. But after watching that first video, I had to put on Top Gun to calm down. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Stop it. So I posted this video on our Patreon page. If if you'd like to support us on Patreon, not that you need to for the videos, but we appreciate all of our supporters on there. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> it was also posted in Discord. And if you're not follow, if you're not part of the Discord channel, discord.phpugly.com. Join us in the conversation. And Eric is drunk and <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm irritating point. Sarah. Yeah, put your, I, trunk, I, put your trunk away, Eric. I told Sarah I, I had this uh, elephant, and I don't think uh, I don't think they believed me. So, this is this is a very rare uh, elephant to have in the PHP community, and uh, I have one, and it irritates Sarah. I think so. so. It's, it irritates her that that you have one. Yeah, I think so. I think I think anything nice that Eric has irritates Sarah. I had an interesting week. <clears throat> well, let me since oh. before we move away from paragliding, since there was a question in Discord, Sarah, I'll get back to that. Discord. Um, you're landing pretty slowly. You land into wind, and so oh god, sorry, are we still Sevi, talking about this? Sevi asked in Discord how you when you land you don't break your legs because it looks like you're flying fast. If you want to join the wind. live conversation, you want to be on discord.phpagley.com. Yes. That'll drop you right into our Discord channel and you can you can speak to us. Yeah. So Sevi, you flare when you land just like an airplane. When you're coming in, you kind of bank up Nothing so like you slow down really quick, hit the ground, same thing. You you flare, you slow down really quick land on your feet and just run it out you're not going that fast you're you're okay i wonder i'm wondering what the difference is between sarah's first gen and the one i have so first sarah i i've talked about this in the show before but how i came across this elephant was a really neat story i thought i had a friend i worked with down here who went to work for for facebook and he messaged me one day he says hey He's like, I got I've, I got my desk at Facebook. I'm like, oh, cool. He goes, I got this PHP elephant in my desk drawer. Do you want it? You did PHP, right? I'm like, oh, yes, I did. I did do PHP. And I was wondering what elephant he had. And a couple of days later, this this little fellow showed up. So I have. Uh, <laughs> I so was him. that your was that your first elephant? I do not think it was my first elephant. No, I'm pretty sure I bought PHP Architect elephant before I. I think that was my first elephant was a PHP architect elephant I purchased. Hmm. Which, if you would like to purchase a PHP architect elephant, how would we do that, John? <laughs> uh, find somebody who has one and, and offer them 100 bucks for it. Or wait uh, about what, another <laughs> month? About that, yeah. We have. I, did, I didn't realize that was coming out of the bag right now, but okay. we have an order. Of PHP elephant, uh, PHP architect elephants. Here, here, let me get them. Archies. We have, we have Archies in route, and through, we we got the blessing. We have uh, Laravel elephants in route. So, yeah, so moving uh, it that fast doesn't help. Huh? <laughs> moving it that fast doesn't help. It was like very blurry. It's like ah. Yeah, everything's so Archie, moving very Archie, fast for Eric right now. I don't know what the uh, I don't know if Laravel Elephant slow. has a name, but, but the orange one, Archie, you know, this guy, Larvy. No, now you're gonna make me go look since you said that. Uh, there's a name, Leona, 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 and Archie. Artie. We have coming into. Uh, into PHP Architect, probably in the next month or two. We're hoping it was a very long lead time. So I, I love that all of our conversations about getting a PHP ugly elephant were like, 
I doubt we'll sell them. No one wants to buy one. And it's like, no, no pe people are buying them without listening to the podcast. We just need to go ahead and get an order of them. We almost got one, Tom. I wasn't going to, I, I, I did, didn't want to talk it about it on the show. So we'll, we won't, but yeah, we almost got one. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> that means nothing to me. I need to actually get one. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It didn't make sense. Dollars and cents, man. Right, which is we, what I'm saying, is that every time we look at them, we're like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But then every elephant sells out no matter what. There's No one has a stockpile. That is unfortunately not true. <laughs> I think uh, here, Eric Mann. Here's the here's the PHP woman one. Yep. This is PHP woman. This is uh, this is the round table one, which we we may need to do another batch of these at some point. But yeah, we get round. Why table we have there hasn't been a round table in like three years. Yeah, oh wait, there was one. Yeah, people one will still years. buy them. This is exactly Amsterdam. what I'm saying. Amsterdam. Anyways. Oh man! We, we just put we could just put the PHP Ugly logo on the uh, the P the Larva one. The, no, the PHP Architect Conference one. Archie. Ah, <sighs> my elephants. So yeah, God, I love elephants. All right. So my week. What about your week? Having having communication troubles. I got stuck on a thing. I got stuck on a third party API that was causing just massive amounts of problems for me. And I will say, I will say lightly reprimanded for not communicating uh how badly things were going. Lightly reprimanded. Lightly reprimanded. Maybe not lightly, maybe 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 mediumly reprimanded. Um, how, how, do you, how do you guys? I mean, you guys manage a, a lot of developers right now. Not as much as we used to. Wow. <laughs> Times are hard. <laughs> how do you guys deal Stupid with? Uh, how do you guys deal with when there's a communication breakdown? When something is taken. Not necessarily at the fault of the developer, but something's taking much longer than it should. Uh, it just hasn't happened that many times, but usually just a conversation of we feel there's this issue. Let's have a conversation. And if it doesn't get rectified within X amount of time, sorry, it's not working out. I mean, we've, we have had to let a couple of people go because of that. Yeah, I think... Uh, I, I Definitely think. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I definitely think you need to um, you take that step to clarify oh, oh. Uh, expectations for sure. So it's a fireable it, offense for sure. It, you so usually it's it's more of a understanding shit happens initially, and as long as that same thing doesn't happen again, it's normally not an issue. But when you have to have the same conversation two or three times then it's like i don't want to have this conversation anymore we're done so it, mistakes happen we we are understanding mistakes happen i don't know what your specific case is but rectify it it's from what you just said i'm hearing that you knew there was something wrong you knew that it was probably like a seven out of ten and maybe you portrayed it as a three out of ten well, and, and our communication pipeline right now isn't the greatest. So I will say that I, I escalated things maybe to the wrong people. So you escalated it where you thought you should have, but it was the wrong way. Yeah. And so when, when you were lightly reprimanded, did you defend yourself in that way and say, like, I brought it up to so-and-so? Yes. And they didn't care. No, they cared. It's it's. I have a very good line of communication with the people that I report to and the people that are above me. Um, 
in some cases, the people that I report to are not above me. And I think so, I made the situation clear, but they also made the situation clear that I was not communicating uh, in the right direction. As long as there was communication and you were able to share that you well, thought it, you were doing the right thing. Like not always my strength. It, communication, not the best. But were you, you were sharing, trying to rectify the situation, right? Yeah. You weren't trying, you weren't sharing to hide what was happening. No, no, no. So you thought you were doing the right thing. As long as you were, the people above you thought you were doing the right thing, I don't think there's an issue there. They, they're they yeah. just going to say, okay, you, you told so-and-so or you went this direction. In the future, I would really like to know about it. Either at the same time or ahead of time. I wanted, I want you to talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Nothing on a, on a on a more positive note, I I finally got my lenses and my new glasses. I'm not wearing them now because they interfere with my my headset. But oh boy, I love these things. Look at these glasses if they interfere with your headset. They got big arms. <laughs> so these these are uh, like Bluetooth smart glasses. And uh I got them. I got the my prescription put into them. Everything looks really nice. And I went out to hang out with a bunch of my friends. There you go. That's what, that's what these look like. What a difference. They don't look any different at all. Not at all. But I have speakers and microphones in them. And I wore them out to hang out with a bunch of friends of mine. And five people bought a pair <laughs> just by like me showing them my glasses. <laughs> so they should be uh, sponsors of the show. Is that what you're saying? I, yeah, I'm thinking about getting like an affiliate program or something. Speaking of sponsors. When you're in production, a thousand things can go wrong. You could deploy a bug in your latest release. Your background jobs can silently fail. Someone could trip over the network cable at your data center. And this all comes back to you. You need to know when bad things happen and be able to respond to them quickly. That's why we built HoneyBadger. It's easy to install HoneyBadger in your backend applications and front-end JavaScript. It only takes a few minutes of configuration and you'll have monitoring done. That's because we hook into popular web frameworks, job systems, and the browser so that when any of them crash, we can automatically let you know. We ping your application from our global fleet of servers to let you know about problems with connectivity, latency, and SSL certificates. And we monitor your recurring jobs to see if any of them stop recurring. When there's a problem, we alert your team using the tools you already use. We can create issues in GitHub, Jira, and other issue trackers, and send notifications via Slack, PagerDuty, or other channels. When you click through, you'll be taken to detailed information on the error. You'll see things like request parameters, headers, user information, and the backtrace. Click on any line of the backtrace to view it in GitHub, Bitbucket, or your local editor. When you fix a problem, just mark it resolved and follow up with the affected user. That's HoneyBadger, where the monitoring tool for web developers would rather be, well, developing. It's time to take what, is, what are we doing? <laughs> Thank you, Honey Badger. Thank you, Thank Honey, you Badger. Honey Badger. Honey Badger oh. has been the sponsor of the PHP Ugly Show for a very long time. We are very grateful to have them, and they are a fantastic service. We use them at Diego Dev, and I just and we pay to... and we pay for the service. So. We pay for them, yeah, <laughs> with Diego Dev for sure. Uh, I I hear other shows that have sponsorship, and they're like, oh yeah, so and so just sent me this, or they sent me that, and I'm like. Wait, we have a sponsor and we pay for the service. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we and, and not only is it a good service, they're good people too. They're they yeah. we've we've exchanged emails with them and they're very kick they're developers, which is awesome. Just they understand developers and they are developers. So I, I, all right, back to Tom to, back to Tom. I, is, I, uh, I, yeah, I, but, I, to, I had to no, I had to mute Sarah ahead, on uh John. I had to mute Sarah on our Discord. Because she's yeah. she's itching a sensitive topic, the PHP so, release manager selection. Oh, I I queued that up. 
It's cute. Okay. Go ahead, John. John. Eric, Eric, man, John. joined our Discord. All right, I mean, he's already part of our Discord. He joined the conversation to point out that Tom's glasses have a Bluetooth microphone and how that should be some fun shenanigans moving forward. This is and what then, I'm talking about, right? The, and the, then the guy on there, the show who was freaking out about his microwave mapping his house is walking around with a live mic on his head. Whatever. Hey, well, and then Sarah says, hey, look, there's somebody that joined the Discord that has a chance at winning. Oh, look, the chat finally That's got her. someone who will win an RM election. That's so rude. So hurtful. To be fair here, the glasses are just one more microphone in my array of microphones that I carry on my body and in my house and my car. <laughs> so Pretty scary these days, huh? If you've been following internals, uh, the uh, they're taking nominees for the release manager of PHP 8.2. And we do have somebody in our discord who threw their hat in the ring who i am i am personally supporting and uh that should that should pretty much solidify the fact that they will not be elected but <laughs> joe ferguson uh in our discord also posted that he is backing eric mann so congrats so this is my eric question mann. is that are we are we choosing an official position do we have like a PHP ugly nominee? Oh, a candidate for the PHP ugly party? I love yes. that idea. <laughs> just what could just go to wrong? drive Ramsey crazy. I like that. Well, we got to know is Eric Mann officially adopting the P the PHP ugly party? Is he doesn't is he get a switching choice. To... He doesn't get a choice. <laughs> is he switching something... to the I'm going to have to see the voting record. <laughs> <laughs> yes what is this so so are you making an official announcement if you're in or out eric me yes you you eric threw van me under johnson. the bus eric van johnson are you, you threw me an official bus, announcement? God. i thought we had an agreement <laughs> we did i thought but we no, had a conversation up, about this I, I thought we were on I, the same <laughs> page i could not pass up that opportunity come on you gotta you gotta understand that <laughs> no i eric, don't think i'm going to make a make a run for it this time eric and i've had a lot of conversations around this one where it was coming up you know he he really wanted 8.1 and it didn't work out and as 8.2 came it was stolen it, it's not quite fair but as 8.2 came rolling around we started talking and we, we just have so much going on between Diego Dev, PHP Architect, PHP Tech. I mean, it's just too much going on where I don't want to lose this time to release manager stuff. So I <laughs> asked him not to do it, even though I threw him under the bus in Discord. He totally did. <laughs> I'm looking at them like, the son of a bitch. <laughs> I have no friends. What's going on here? Uh, <laughs> yeah i just uh i really want to do it i honestly do i still do want to do it i i had a lot of fun um promoting it and talking about it um and clearly i mean ramsey fucked it up enough times i could do better than he did for sure so gonna get us uh, dude it's gonna be johnny depp all over again <laughs> But yeah, it's not going to be eight point two for sure. It might be. Uh, it might be. And, and what's funny is uh, Ramsey tried to step up as the veteran for for release manager eight point two, and Sarah's like, "Uh, uh, that's not happening. That's not how this works. You did Don't a horrible job. You're lucky you have a job now." I thought that was. I, I might be reading more into it than it actually was there. I mean, I, we, no, all, you we to, all know you, you are. Have, Don't you have to be in it for two years before you can? You have. You step have up to, to be, that level. Yeah, you have to. I think, and Sarah is in Discord. She can correct me, but I think you have to skip one, or I think you have to skip a release. Like you can't do it back to back because it's a three year commitment. So eight point one and eight point two are overlapping on the releases, and so I think the idea is that um, you have to you have to skip a release or something just so that you you just don't have too much piled up on top of you. 
Don't correct me, Sarah, when I'm trying to make him look bad. It's my show. It it's literally it's in the rules not, not that you show. can't uh, RM two releases at once. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. And and again, it's just a matter of workload. They're not it, it, they do it so that people don't don't overload themselves with you know commitment to internals. So it's it's there. It's like a safety mechanism. So you're while you're release manager for eight one while eight two is in the pipeline, you're still maintaining eight one through that. And then afterwards, I mean, I mean, you maintain it to end of life, right? So, I mean, we all know how long end of life is for a release. So you're, you're, you're committing. I mean, obviously they don't, there's no contract. They're not holding you to it, but you're committing to saying, Hey, I will manage this release to end of life. Now this for, because they anticipated such poor performance from Ramsey this year, they had two, uh, um, (laughs) two rookie release managers. Uh, so they're carrying that over, which I still think is a really great idea. So they have they have two release managers and then they have a veteran who has previous, previously done releases, who understands the process to kind of guide the, the new people through. Um, I think the two, the two release manager kind of structure is really good. Just watching them release, you, you see that um, Ramsey and... Um, Oh man, we give sh- we give Ramsey shit so much. I can't remember the other release manager's name. We. Uh, anyways, you you see them kind of bounce back and forth on who's actually doing a release. Um, so they do a they do a. Re- I think it's a really good cadence that they have uh, in that scenario, and I'm glad that they they're sticking to it. So the so Eric man so in eight point two they're going to have two release managers again. Um, you know so yeah there you go uh, Patrick. Patrick, Patrick thank you. Thank you, yeah. Sarah. Patrick does a really good job. Patrick is the reason why 8.2 or 8.1 was actually successful. Because... <laughs> <Whew. laughs> thank you, Patrick, Jesus. for all right. saving all of us. Uh, I'm sorry, Ramsey. <laughs> if, you're, if you're not watching the show live, you can't tell, but uh, Eric has 10 shots lined up in front of him. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> So, All right, so it's, yeah, it's official. You're time. out. You're I'm out officially out. Yeah, for eight point two for sure. Maybe uh, I want I want one of the round numbers. I want like a point oh or point five. Nobody remembers point one, point two. Nobody, nobody cares about it. Well, you are point, incremental point five isn't change. Round. Everybody wants a point five or a point oh release. That's that's my target. <laughs> my my target is nine point oh. That's my next. That's I'm a nine point oh is what I'm going for. See, nobody realizes, but I was release manager a seven five. You're a release manager of 6 0. We think that's funny. Well, it's been, <laughs> it's been a good run. It's just fun to have a podcast for this long. <laughs> Tom was just bailing at this point. He was like, oh, oh, my God. What did I miss? What happened? I don't know. Just Eric's on an insult rampage. I am. I've had too much tequila. Blame my kid. <laughs> my kid is in the office this entire time. It's their fault. Every time I turn around, they poured the new shot. What's this mean? What's this mean? <laughs> they do oh, not man. identify as your child right now, and I am with them. <sighs> Do we have PHP news? You have the you have the Trello cards. We have a bunch of stuff. I was going to talk on PHP Roundtable today. We can talk about, but since you, since you're never going to air an episode of Roundtable, we can do it here. So PHP, the PHP Foundation um, is releasing uh, incremental blog posts where they're kind of giving everybody a heads up on what they're doing. Um, you know. Uh, just that sort of stuff. I mean, it's it's good. They're, it's the whole transparency thing, right? They're trying to they're trying to be more transparent on what the foundation's doing, how it's contributing. You know. So there's a new there's a new foundation blog which should be showing up here in Discord pretty soon. But it's the PHP blog. 
Um, so yeah, check that out if you're ever curious of what's going on with the PHP Foundation. There There's a lot of RFC stuff, and one of the one of the interesting RFCs that isn't covered in this blog is a a request to add a string class object. Have you followed this one at all? No, but doesn't everybody have a string class in their library at this point? Well, this is a castable. The idea here is that this is a castable string class. So when you pass a string to a method that casts as a string class, it will convert it. And boy, I, I cannot find it on the externals. Ten, ten shots, zero votes. <laughs> she is on fire tonight. There's oh, my title. gosh. That is, <laughs> that is rough. She's out. For um, a lot of stuff in voting. A lot of it paid for by the PHP Foundation. Um, I am so glad to be seeing these kinds of updates. Uh, it seems like they're going to try and do like a biweekly type thing. Um, null and false standalone types. Uh true types that's a different rfc for some reason read only classes uh and an interesting one which is deprecating a sort of a rarely used string interpolation uh dollar sign curly brackets which i've honestly never seen I've used curly braces, but not in that way. What does that do? Uh, so it's variable. It's variable embedding. It only works with the double quote and here doc. Um, and it's hard to tell exactly what it does. I mean, there's there's dollar sign curly brackets variable, and then there's dollar sign no, then there's curly brackets dollar sign variable. And I I, well, I really can't tell you. Well, that makes sense. The the dollar signs right. That's I think what most people use. Yeah. But then there's a there's an implementation of variable variables that is dollar sign curly brackets dollar sign variable. Right. That's that is a variable variable type thing. I have a variable and I don't know which one I'm going to use. So I'm going to set it prior to this and now I'm going to use it this way. It It's terrible coding, but I've done it plenty of times. So it's horrendous. <laughs> it is, but I've done it so many times. It's not funny. So there, there's, but, there's four method or five methodologies that this can be used or four. I don't know. Are we starting with zero? There's four methodologies that this can be used as. And it looks like this RFC just sort of went through GitHub and said, like, which ones do people use? Which ones do people not use? And just said, get rid of the ones people don't use. So you'll, you'll still get a bracket dollar sign variable, but dollar sign variable bracket you won't get. Uh, it's 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 weird stuff, but it, it's overwhelmingly approved. A Thirty-one to one. Wow. So what is? Can you, this? Can you put those in so, Tom? so this is this is deprecating the, that string interpolation. Right. This so, is deprecating the dollar sign before the brace. So what Sarah shared in Discord of dollar curly brace dollar foo equals dollar dollar foo. I get that. But dollar curly brace a string foo equals dollar foo. One, why would you ever use that? And why do we need to deprecate it? 
there, I mean, there... just to make people stop from doing something stupid. Yeah, there's so many weird cases where I'm like, why would anyone ever use this? But because PHP is the first language for some people, I'm like ah, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing, and it wasn't my first language. It's my fourth, fifth. Anyway. Anyway. There's also an interesting new project that lets you keep your secrets in GitHub. So there's a, a, a new script called Git Secret. And it it's very it's is, very is flexible. It get, is it meant to get rid of an ENB file in production or something? Uh, it's meant to do any kind of encrypted on one side, decrypted on the other stuff. So you you share the secret key with whoever needs it, and you can put it on GitHub without worrying that somebody's going to be able to do anything with it. What? Um, are you sure you're reading that right? Yeah, so the, the, the real trick of this script is that they spent the time integrating this with a bunch of Docker images and default-ish Git installations. The sixth part, in the sixth part of this tutorial series of developing PHP on Docker. So right off the bat, that's an interesting little, this is six parts. See, it's on... a huge article. Mm. It's a huge article, but it does solve something that the reason I think it's worth talking about is it does solve something that I've been complaining about, which is what do you do with secrets when you're sharing code? Yeah, there's a, there's been a couple of solutions out there. Amazon actually has one. There, there's a um, somebody but, came out with a package in the Laravel community, and I actually had implemented it for like hosting all your .env files, securely hosting them. I mean, and you then can't that, securely host them. There's no possible way. Why is there no possible way? I'm maybe I'm confused on what this is trying to solve, but if the point is within my PHP code, I can use the secrets from somewhere else, and I'm gonna know what those secrets are. So right. the, the the trick here is right. taking all of your secrets and boiling them down to one secret that you can share a different way. Uh, so like a, a private so key. So you're not hiding it from somebody else per se. If you share, if you're sharing the secret, you're sharing all the keys that go with it. It's not like, Hey, I'm going to give you this secret key. So you don't see all the other data that goes along with it. Right. So the, the because trick that here is work. that this, this script runs on pull and commit and finds stuff that is encrypted and either encrypts it when you're pushing or decrypts it when you're pulling. So as long as you have the one secret key, then you've got a big shareable pool of other secrets that you can have hosted on GitHub or whatever. Yeah. Just make, just make uh, I mean, the file public and you're good to go. Exactly. Yeah, just publish um, your easy, AWS credentials on easy, Google easy. and you're fine. Yeah, nothing to worry about. So this is using GPT. It's using a lot of stuff. Like I said, this is like 20 or 30 pages of of this six-part series. Well, right, so, but this is this is just on this this uh, key exchange. So how do you propagate your ENV files right now, Tom? I communicate the issue via Jira and Slack. Well, no, but I mean, EMB files updated. How does it get to production servers during deployment? Our EMV files reference uh, variables defined in the Docker server. So um, when you deploy a new Docker server, so I'm assuming your deployment tears down your Docker containers, spins up new ones. At that, which I don't, point, that I don't know, actually. Um, um, I got to make an assumption at that point because that's 
the way you're going to get new environment variables in there, right? Right. Exactly. If if that's how you're doing your environment variables, it would have to. Sure. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not doing them in my ENV. I reference a global variable in the system, and that gets defined by our operations team. So division of responsibilities. That's that's common. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's. It's just not a good solution. It's all there's no there's no perfect solution for sure. No. Yeah, you no, mentioned that no. you mentioned the Amazon solution. There is AWS Secrets Manager. Um mm -hmm. I can't imagine that they're doing anything impressive or special because nothing yet has like I've gone like, hey, that's a brilliant way of handling things. But yeah, it's a, it's an interesting problem that I constantly run into where, uh, I mean, especially as a developer, I have sandbox keys and then I have production keys. And when I push a change out to production, all of a sudden something's not working right. I, and can I tell you, I wasn't going to bitch about APIs this week. I wasn't. <laughs> but. but I have a new API that does a header redirect to the page that you're already on when there's an authentication failure. Fucking come on. Come on. You're not going to throw an error or anything. You're just going to you're just going to give me a 200 status code and redirect me to the page I'm already on so I get a curl exception for too many redirects. Fucking come on. Come on, amateur hour. So, all right. So, in Discord, Nupilios, I hope I pronounced that somewhat correct. I asked, should you commit like credentials? You should, you should Nupilios. Nupilios. Nope. Nup whatever. Should you commit credentials into Git? Absolutely not. No, <laughs> never. No. Unless, so, no. <laughs> I was going to try to play devil's advocate, but no, the, even the devil is not going to tell you to do that one. So, so Sarah is 100% correct. Secrets and credentials are hard. It's hard to maintain. It's hard to have a good solution. We all try to do our best to keep our secrets secret. Uh, I was asking Tom his method of doing it uh, in the project I mainly work on. Our method is we have a an AWS bucket that stores our env file and then on deployment we basically take oh, what's in there and and push it into production so we're going to deploy the code that's in git go grab the file from aws and deploy that with it so trying to keep a little bit of separation there and and sarah points out that github tries to make sure you don't commit your secrets uh, it, it understands certain things are secret keys and certain things are like where you store secret keys and it will try to stop you from doing it, but it's not foolproof. If you, if you put your secrets directly into Git and there's any sort of leak one, you, you shouldn't be trusting all your developers. That's just one thing. But once your keys are leaked, especially AWS type keys, we've seen it where people then just start spinning up servers under your account. And that's never fun. All of a sudden, one month, your bill quadruples or more. And you're like, what happened? And then you realize, oh, somebody has my keys. And then you're constantly fighting. How do they get them? How do I protect so I don't do this again? So think about it up front. Take, take our word for it. It's not fun. Yeah. <clears throat> also, there's a, a, a very simple like Google search to just grab any w, any AWS keys that are floating yeah. out there. Well, uh, wasn't, there, there <laughs> wasn't there a Google search for um, .env files too? Yeah, yeah. Can we, I mean, I don't, I don't want to bring like the hate cloud down upon us, but can we talk about the Laravel community for a minute? Because I love Laravel and I and, and it's got a great community, but sometimes it is the lowest bar. 
What happened? What, what did I miss? If it, uh, if it involves Michael Dinko, I'm not surprised. No, somebody somebody posted uh, on on the Reddit Laravel group. Somebody posted uh, <clears throat> a little guide to how to use Scribe, which is a documentation platform for Laravel. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had the debug bar enabled and installed on the production version of their site. Oops. Which does expose private keys and stuff like that. But the one that really got me, and I'm I've I've been told that this is satire. I'm not sure. But when Elon Musk did his whole I'm buying Twitter thing. Mm-hmm. Um Somebody posted, hey, I'm a Laravel developer and we have a great community. <clears throat> we would be able to produce new features and refactor all of Twitter into a Laravel-based system within a couple months. And Am man- I drunk or is he just like <clears throat> rambling now? I'm, I, I've lost track of <laughs> Who's more off base here, if it's me or Tom? I just want people to understand how big Twitter is. Like, as soon as I heard Elon Musk, I kind of shut down. Like, oh, can, here we go again. I'm trying to you focus. can refactor Twitter to, to handle a million users in Laravel. But, dude, the, a- the API is called the fire hose. Because you can't sustain the amount of data that is in it. I just... <clears throat> Let's take this opportunity, because this was another PHP roundtable topic, but I do want to bring it up. Um, to thank our Patreons. Yes, that's where I was going, Tom. Thank I you. That's, I thought <laughs> Not I, where I was, I was going at all, but... Getting, I know, I'm just we, getting, I'm getting so tired. <laughs> <laughs> But what buy the Patreon pages up? Which uh, we we have some cherry blossoms. I'm a big cherry blossoms guy. It's our, it's kind of we, we've adopted it as our family tree, and I actually have it tattooed on my arm as a cherry blossom. So May is a big deal. That's why we we adopted it. Actually, uh, was it China or Japan? I forget now. Somebody somebody donated the cherry blossoms to Washington D.C., where I'm from, in May, and I was born in May. So all that kind of came together, and we adopted the cherry blossom as kind of the family family tree. It was Japan, I'm being told, and we all have cherry blossoms tattooed on us now. So it's kind of a cool thing. But uh, moving on, I was going to something else. Totally forgot was about to talk about. That is that is horrifyingly scary. What what did I say before then? Uh, something, something about, about round table. table. Roundtable. Oh, roundtable. Um, mass. Uh, another topic I had for um, roundtable is uh, the Mastodon. Um, there is a PHP Mastodon called PHPC. Oh my God, I forgot the URL. Let me look it up real fast. PHPC.social, which has, I, I, I've been on it for a few years. I think it was created to accommodate Sarah Goldman, who who uh, has trouble keeping friends. But uh, <laughs> with the announcement of Elon Musk buying Twitter, man, have we seen a spike? I, I've I've had to like log in on a regular basis now uh, to Mastodon um, or to to PHPC social. Uh, yeah, look, everybody's posting their their profile in there as well. Um, so yeah, that's a thing now, uh, well, not now it's always been a thing. So this has been out there for a long time and somebody had mentioned it. Matter of fact, it might've been Eric, man, I forget who mentioned it, but somebody had mentioned like that is now what Twitter used to be, which is all the hardcore geeks are kind of gravitating to it. And there's a lot of good geek coding conversations going on in there. 
So if anybody's interested, php dot uh, phpc dot social. Here, I'll throw it in. I'll throw it in the Discord for for our listeners. But that um, is really why I joined Twitter early on. It, yeah, it me was, too. It was all tech, and then mm-hmm. everybody else ruined it, so I stopped posting there. Yeah. Mm, so there's some, and somehow I have a bridge, and I forgot how I set this up. It's been so long. But I'm sure if you Google Twitter Mastodon 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 bridge, um, you have to you have to you have to Google that whole ramble. Uh, it'll come up. But somehow <laughs> I have a I have a bridge that I just post to Twitter and auto post this to the other one and vice versa. Um, so it's cool. Check it out if you're if you're not on there. I requested an invite. Maybe I will be accepted one day. Have you, you seen that Twitter? Invite? Apparently, the Twitter API is opening up again. Is there an invite? Yes, I did see that. Are yeah, you serious, you John? PHP's, yeah, when you go to phpc.social, you have to ask for an invite. Well, if you only knew somebody of importance, uh, I, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't. You you do. Unfortunately, we all do. But he's the evil person in the PHP community. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he's the he's the mastermind behind this uh, this deployment. So now my it's question Ramsey. is: Do is there a Truth Social PHP group? Stop it! I'm not even going to. Uh, <laughs> you need to do a shot now. I don't have a shot. If I'd had if I had had more than the one shot, this episode would have been over an hour ago. You really have to request. You you have to request yeah, to be so on. It's- Yes, sir. Just approve me. Oh, there you go. Bam. Look, sir. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How are you approving people, sir? Uh, why do I not have that sort of power? What's going on? Nobody likes me. Yes. Though. The power grab continues. That's right. It does. Wait, I just, I just got blocked. What happened? No. <laughs> yeah, I have invite people. I can invite people. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm sending I'm sending an invite code to Discord just so everybody has it now. It's not gonna be in the show notes. It's just for the people in Discord. Boom. There you go. That that is an express lane in for anybody who's interested. Just click on that link and well, I mean apparently Sarah's approving people. Ramsey owns the instance. Well, there's the problem. He likes me. Oh, maybe that's the problem. He doesn't like me. <laughs> what? Why wouldn't he like you? You've been know. nothing but mean. Mean, I think it's the word you're looking for. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Your account is fully operational. There you go. We should get a flood of people now. Uh, yeah, Eric Mann's about to get banned once Ramsey figures out that he's uh, trying to be release manager. <laughs> is that how All that right. works? That's how it works. All right. We know that's here. good. We did Patreons. We did our. We did a Honey Badger sponsor. I think we're good. We Let talked me... about paragliding, the most important topic of the show. That's going to be it for episode two hundred and eighty-five of PHP Ugly. I'm Eric. I'm John. I'm Tom. Keep it ugly. Keep, Keep it, it ugly. ugly. Are you trying to skip an ad? I was, yes. I'm a drop of freestyle. You can chat. I don't know because we can't hear anything. But shout out to the host named Eric. Yo, he's never on some average shit. You know, Eric, he stays loud and passionate. I'm about to break it down for y'all with the clever song. Yo, shout the host name Thomas because he's never wrong. Yo, shout to John. You know that he's smart and quiet. Unlike my freestyles, which cause a riot. I'm about to do it like this because the people love me. Shout to out to php the ugly it's called ugly because it's not professional but i'm about to come through and bless it with style so let's do it when i'm spitting i perfume the room yo the segment of the show is called doom and gloom that came from thomas yeah can nobody go beyond this i get the mic and then i'm about to keep it like a promise yeah and y'all know we fill them up with anguish we talking about the php the programming language about to break it down no exaggeration what do y'all do for a living web applications okay 
Okay, I can dig it. My words spray tight. Uh, they getting together on the Thursday nights. Yeah, when it comes to rhyming, you can call me the new dude. That's few true lyrics while y'all broadcast on YouTube. So let's get it. You know my lyrics are major. All up in the comments, they got plenty of haters, but they doing what they doing. Keep it ugly. We ending every show with the saying it's lovely. Let's go. Hey, shout out.